Hi guys, it's Nancy. Welcome back. Are you making Christmas cards? All right, I have a really cute bunny stamp set here called Winter Buddies. Look at this cute little bunny with his scarf hanging out with little Frosty with his scarf here. And then you do get the sentiment that says Merry Christmas. And the sentiment is separate. Um, nice and big print there. Um, really easy to color. Really cute Christmassy card. If you have somebody that's not really Christmassy and you just want to send them a winter wet, a winter wishes card, this is a nice cutesy scene that you can send. All right. So I've already done one card. This one was really simple. I used the glitter method on this. And if you've never seen this, go check out Blue Night Rubber Stamps. They do have a video on this. Um, but all I did was I used the, um, pan pastels and the cloud stencil in the background and then I colored this image in I believe I used color pencils when I colored it in and then you put double-sided adhesive on the whole thing you put some glitter on it and everything looks great but today we're gonna do um some real simple coloring with pan pastels. And then I'm going to use the snow marker and use that for my snow, okay? Let's get started. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock. This is cut down to five and a quarter by four. We are in the Tim Holtz stamping platform on the rubber side because this is a red rubber stamp. And I'm going to ink this up with Catherine Pooler Midnight Ink. Um, this ink dries quickly. It's archival, and it is super black. In fact, I just re-inked mine, so you can already see the ink squishing out of it. You don't want to push down with these ink pads. And, of course, I have my Blue Night Rubber Stamps Universal Hit Handle on there, which makes it easy because you can see this ink pad is kind of thin. There's not a lot of surface area to hold on to it, so the handle makes it easy. I don't have to worry about dropping it. And the, this is the new universal size, which is a little bit smaller, so it fits in these oval um, stamp pads a lot easier. Okay, we're going to stamp that down. I do have a little piece of sticky grid in the background there. It's Sizzix sticky grid back there. You can see that stamped out perfectly. I don't have to worry about my stamp staining because they're red rubber stamps. Let's take my little... Stamp cleaner and a rag and wipe that down. Now, I'm going to leave that in there and I'm just going to pull the lid off. Come on. Pops right off. And we're going to color right on our platform here. I'm going to bring some pan pastels in. You can pick up the stamps and the pan pastels from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. They have a day and a night and a um, sunrise, sunset. The day and the night is your cool colors. That's going to be your blues and your greens, purple. And then the sunrise, sunset is going to be your warms. It's going to have your red, orange, yellow, and magenta in that one. And they do sell some other colors as individual a la carte colors. But when you order them, you get seven colors. You get the pan. So you get all but these colors here. And then I always recommend purchasing a color, colorless blender. You get the nice storage tray, which also comes with a lid, and you get a variety of tools to use. So it's great if you're starting out. For those of you who have not watched my channel before, I have quite a few videos on using these pan pastels, but um, they're a lot of fun. You can pick up little makeup applicators and use them. Um, I've picked these up from Hobby Lobby. These are the Jane Davenport ones. So anything... Um, you can use and then they do come with like I said some of their own soft tools which makes it easy to work with all right I'm gonna start with this soft tool which is just a little foot there and cleanup is super easy all you need is a paper towel okay so I'm gonna start with his hat Pan pastels are highly pigmented artist quality chalks. Think of a really nice makeup. So it's going to be a lot of pigment, a lot of color in there, but there's not a lot of dust like traditional chalks. They blend very easily. Um, I often refer to it as like a dry paint where you get all the colors and the blending. 
like paint, but it's not wet like paint. So it's instant, uh, instantly dried. Okay, let's do a little bit of black here. And I just grab a little bit on the tool there, right in on his hat, pull that color in. And if I go outside the lines or I don't like the way anything looks, all I have to do is take an eraser to it. You can buy an inexpensive electric racer from Amazon. It comes with a whole bunch of refill tips. You just put batteries and hold that little tip down and then wherever you're outside the lines, you erase it. It's like magic. Oops. Um, let's do a little bit of, I'm going to bring some grays in here. Now these colors I purchased individually. Um, some of them you can find on Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Some of them you can find at Blick Art Store. Um, Spellbinders had a sale and they had a few of them, so... You can look around and, and find them, but the, the best value for getting the, the kits was at Blue Night Rubber Stamps last time I checked. All right, so I think that's a little too gray for my snow, so we're going to erase some of that, but that's okay. Again, it's, it's mistake-proof. Actually, the eraser comes with this little sweeper brush, so you can sweep away any of those eraser bits. Okay, let's add some color, some green. And then here's the Sunrise Sunset palette. We'll use some red and a little bit of orange out of this palette. And if you have any spots that are just way too small to get into, you can always use a color pencil. So you don't have to do the whole thing in pan pastels. Keep that in mind. Pan pastels definitely make it easier, but. I 
for me, I don't personally like to sit down and spend hours coloring. So this is really easy instant gratification for me. A little bit of detail in here. Some darker green in my collection. And actually have a darker red. This is called the Nature Set. This one has some darker colors. I get this one from Spellbinder. So I'm using permanent red shade and permanent green extra dark. Um, and I'll link the Spellbinder's link for you guys. That's where I got it. All right, and then we just need to color in our bunny. And I think we'll do real simple browns with him. Ooh, that might be a little too dark. I'm gonna have to lighten that up, that's okay. Okay, easy peasy. And like I said, anywhere you don't like that you've gone out of the line, you can just take your eraser. Good. Get some of that. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add some clouds. I have the reverse cloud stencil here. super light blue. This is called Thalo Blue Tint. It's a really light, light blue, pastel blue. And pull that in over my reverse stencil. This is one of the soft tools you get in the kit. And then kind of angle my cloud this way, or my stencil. And kind of angle it this way. And I'm just lightly using just the corner of the sponge to get that color over the stencil. You don't need a lot of pressure. That's what's great about this is it's really simple to do. non-toxic so if you want to try this with your littles your grandkids 
You can certainly allow them to do these with you. I oftentimes let Leah color with me. And easy cleanup. Like I said, you don't have to worry about getting ink all over your fingers. The pan pastels generally wash off pretty easily. And now we have this beautiful sky. Now, oftentimes I'll go in with colorless blender and smooth that out. I don't need to do that because that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, so at this point, if you're pretty happy with the way everything looks, and maybe you just want to re-stamp it, because sometimes the um, pan pastels do get over the ink. That's why I left the stamp on the lid. I can go in, lightly re-stamp it. And it's already lined up. Okay, so now we have all of that detail back. All right, and then I want to add some snow to this. So you can use snow puff embossing powder, or I'm going to show you the um, Marvy snow pen. Now, I'll show you the snow pen comes in two different packaging, depending on which part of the store you find it in. I'll show you what both of them look like. Now, I'm going to pull this out real quick, and I'm going to set this with some Krylon spray, and I'll show you guys how I do that. So... We're in real time here, so you can see all the coloring looks really cute. Get that out of the way. I have what I call a spray spritz box. Just has, as you can see, very painted on paper towels there. And then I use this Krylon matte spray. Now you should do this outside. I'm going to actually pull this away from the camera so that it doesn't spray up onto the camera. And I'm going to give it a few quick spritzes. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now the whole thing's been coated. And it'll take just a second for that to dry. You'll notice that it's not soaked in because it's a matte spray. It's not going to be super shiny or glossy, but that is wet. We want to give that just a moment to dry. Okay. Um, it does smell like spray paint, so you do want to do that outside. Try not to inhale the fumes. And where's my other snow pen? Okay, here. So this is the exact same thing. This is called the Marvy Snow Marker, or it's called the Puffy Fabric Paint Marker, okay? So you can pick this up at Hobby Lobby. You can pick it up at Michael's. Just depends on what part of the store. So obviously in the wintertime, they, they manufacture and, and sell it as a snow marker for crafts. Um, but you can go into any of the fabric aisle and find it this way as the puffy velvet pen but it is exactly the same pen it has a little picture of a white and a blue shirt in there it does come in different colors so you want to make sure that you get the white one um i wonder if it even says on here what color it is no but anyway okay so when you get it you do need a heat tool to use this you're going to shake it. This also has a plastic coating we need to take off of here. Now, these are inexpensive. They're under $5, but I find that their shelf life is basically one season. Um, once the, the paint nib gets used, um, it starts to clog the nozzle, and then the paint kind of squirts all over the place. So I usually do buy myself a fresh one every year. Okay, so what you're going to do to prep this is you want to prime the marker. And how you prime it is you it's 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 got that little felt nib there, and you can hear the little ball in there, and you're just gonna kind of press it up and down. And there you can already see the paint starting to flow out. And all you're going to do then is you're gonna take that and color in the areas where you want snow. So this is going to look like a white liquid marker and then as you need more you do want to kind of depress it off of your paper because if you depress it onto your paper believe me you are going to regret all of that paint that flies out of the nozzle so depress it off of your paper
Again, if you have snow embossing powder, puff embossing powder, I think Hero Arts makes that. Um, you can use that as well. Okay, so I'm going to color in anywhere here where I think I want puffy snow. Okay, I'll come back to my snowman later. And you can layer this up. So if you think it's too thin, wherever it's thicker, it's going to give you more layers. All right, so this is not the secret. You know, you guys are saying, I don't get it, Nance. It's just showing white marker. You need to bring in your heat tool. Okay, so you can see it's kind of white marker shiny down there, right? Okay, so here's where the secret comes in. You're going to bring in your heat tool, your embossing gun, and you're going to put heat to that. And as you do, you will see that it will puff up. Can you see that? Okay, now it's only going to puff up so much, and the more you have down, so you can see it's way puffier here than here, the more liquid you have, the more it's going to puff up. So if you don't think it's puffy enough in certain areas, go in and add some more of that. Look at that. Looks like real snow. So that's it. Very easy to do. Then I would just make sure you wipe your tip off. Look, it comes out easily. That's why it flows out everywhere. So just be careful with that. Wipe that off. Try to store it upright instead of downwards. Um, there you can see all that extra snow kind of fell out. And you can just use a little um, cleaning solution and clean that up. come right out okay so i hope you had fun watching me create this fun winter card again the stamp set that i used is called winter buddies you can pick this up from blue night rubber stamps um, i'll put the link down below for you i also use the pan pastels and the reverse cloud stencil and the magnetic handle and you can pick all of those up also from blue night rubber stamps the snow pen i will link down below for you um, and then also don't forget there is the glitter method. Let me know down in the comments below, which winter scene do you prefer? Do you prefer the realistic looking puffy snow pen? Or do you like the snowy glittery scene? Oh, the one more thing you can do, I forgot, with the snow pen is you can actually dot some snow. I mean, if we're going to have a snowstorm... And again, you can make them different sizes, bigger or smaller. Now it's finished. Now we have some real snow on there.
So yeah, let me know if you like the puffy snow, if you like the glitter one better, comment down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing by clicking the notification down here and turning the bell on for all notifications. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.